to ponder the big questions like who are we? Where do we come from? And did we ever have sex with Neanderthals? A random straw poll of women here in London suggests the answer is yes. Yes. Mm, yes. We've all experienced certain people like that. Your husband, Sarah? <laughs> but now we have proof. In fact, the Neanderthal sex question is only part of this extraordinary story. Take a look at the person you're sitting with now, or look at me. That person is between 1 and 3% Neanderthal, according to their DNA. If you're Australian, there's a chance the person you're sitting next to is 5%, a brand new kind of ancient hominin that until two years ago we never even knew existed. You or your neighbour could be part Denisovan. These are the most exciting discoveries in human origins in decades. Which is why I'm now heading over here to Leipzig, Germany, home to Grand Central Human Origins HQ, the Max Planck Institute. But we begin our story two years ago with what has to be one of the most standout days at work ever. I was in America at a conference and one of my collaborators was sequencing the DNA from a tiny, tiny little piece of bone we had gotten from Siberia called me uh, on my cell phone and asked if I was sitting down or not. And I came in and he told me, oh, you know, we have this finger from Denisova from layer 11 and we have something very weird. So we were just thinking, is it Neanderthal? Is it human? And he was like, no. And I said, so, so what? Is it a hybrid? And he said, no, it's neither a Neanderthal nor a modern human. It's something very, very different. The cause of all this consternation was the routine analysis of this rather unprepossessing piece of 30,000-year-old bone. It was found here in the remote Altai Mountains in Siberia, in a small elevated cave called Denisova. The area was already exceptional in that it was one of the few to house both Neanderthals and ancient Homo sapiens. But now it seemed a third kind of human was sleeping there as well. And then something else turned up. For me, much more exciting was that um, about three weeks later, we flew to Novosibirsk to, to talk to our Russian colleagues, and then they pulled this tooth out of their pocket. And that was when I, you know, when I saw that tooth, I knew this is not a Neanderthal, and it's definitely not a modern human. So it was, it was very clear, really. I mean, I needed maybe 10 seconds looking at the tooth, and I knew. It's a huge tooth, twice the size of ours. What goes through your head at that point? Oh, shit. Uh, that was more or less, I mean... <laughs> They had two individuals now. It was definitely an entirely new kind of human, closely related to modern humans. And the little finger DNA revealed a brown-eyed, dark-skinned girl. So who were they and where did they go? Well, this is the bit that unbelievably is going to lead us all the way back to Australia. But before we go there, it's time to talk Neanderthals. In case you need a refresher, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens parted ways genetically about 400,000 years ago. While our great-great-grandparents stayed warm in Africa, the Neanderthals moved across the frigid tundras of Europe. This is a Neanderthal skeleton right? reconstruction. In this case, as you see, he's rather similar to me. He's a little bit shorter. He's rather stocky. They were very, very muscular, strong people. They had fire. They probably wore clothes. They even had a gene, the FOX2 gene, which suggests they could in some ways talk. So contrary to popular belief, they could invite their ladies to the cave rather than drag them. And the brain is very big. It's bigger than ours on average. So muscular, broad shoulders. Yeah, massive, like a bodybuilder, strong guys. We had much more in common than you'd think. And that's why it's always been hotly debated whether, when our mob wandered into Europe much later, the two kinds of people interbred. Well, this institute first sensationally made world headlines when it sequenced the entire Neanderthal genome and answered that question once and for all. 
So we could then begin to compare these Neanderthal fragments to the human genome. So you see some of them, a few percent of them, match. So I have Neanderthal DNA in me now. Yes. But here's the stunning bit. People from Africa do not have this Neanderthal DNA. But the rest of us all do, which means it had to have arrived after Homo sapiens left Africa. Here's what they now think happened. When Homo sapiens left Africa around 100,000 years ago, they probably first encountered Neanderthals and bred with them here in the Middle East, and then spread across here. So I've been thinking about this. Mm -hmm. This means then that it's the women mm -hmm. that had to have had sex with Neanderthals for uh, the genes to end up in our gene pool. Well, the babies must have been raised with modern humans yeah. to contribute to people today. So the most reasonable thing is that this was sort of just yes, modern human women with Neanderthal men. That would presumably be very attractive to them. So what most of you watching this have ended up with is an average of 1% to 3% DNA from Neanderthals. So they'd established that, yes, we ladies did have sex with Neanderthals, and mind-blowingly, those genes are still alive in us all today. But it raised the obvious question. Did we also have sex with these new folk, the Denisovans? Denisovans parted ways with our direct ancestor around 400,000 years ago, then split with Neanderthals around 300,000 years ago and were clearly still living at the time our forebears surged out of Africa. So to check for interbreeding, now all the team had to do was start trawling modern humans for signs of their presence. Now, you'd expect if there were any traces of Denisovan DNA still around, they'd be in people here. Siberia, Mongolia, near the cave. But nothing. Instead, it turned up all the way over here. I mean, I, I thought it's a joke. I mean, there's, there's really, there's practically no population in the world that's geographically as far away from the Altai as Australians are. You know, I mean, that's, I don't know, it's like 10,000 kilometers. Genes, only these. Denisovan DNA is present in modern people in the Philippines, Indonesia, Fiji, but the biggest concentration is right here. So this is the one that interests me here. This group of Australians contain the highest percentage, along with the New Guineans, of Denisovan DNA to this day. That's right. The amount of Denisovan um, ancestry in Native Australians and New Guineans, we estimated somewhere around 4 to 6%. 4 to 6%. Wow. Which means any Australian with an Indigenous ancestor probably has Denisovan as well as Neanderthal genes. So we have a picture now of 50,000 years ago. Neanderthals in the West and Denisovans in the East, with the most likely place that Denisovans bred with Homo sapiens being down here in eastern Indonesia. And if that is indeed the case, then that is also, I think, a bit extraordinary because that means that Denisovans were more widespread than any other hominin, with the exception of us. OK, so one side of my family has been in Australia since settlement, so I could be part Denisovan, and I'm definitely part Neanderthal. So my question is, what are my Neanderthal genes for? Well, some are probably rubbish. But what we're interested in is a group of immune system genes called HLAAs. They code for disease-fighting proteins. Now, remember, only a very small fraction of my overall genes come from Neanderthals and maybe from Denisovans. But as a European, fully half of all my HLAA genes come from archaic humans. As the investigators ranged further into China, 72% of HLAA genes came from archaic humans. To Papua New Guinea, where it's 90%. It seems that as modern humans spread from Africa to the east, they would have encountered diseases they had no resistance to. But mating with our archaic cousins gave us disease resistance genes we took with us the further we went. So if you interbreed with them and get the parts that give you immunity, that of course is a large selective advantage. 
What that means is that sex with Neanderthals and Denisovans helped our ancestors colonise the world. So it looks like our great, 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 great grandmothers took one for the team. It's really a very exciting time. It's great luck to, to be part of this whole thing. I think the whole Denisovan story is probably one of the most amazing stories in science in the last 10 years. And what next? What will be discovered next? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I, I should be the last to guess. I had certainly not guessed we would find the Denisovans. So how am I to know? In, in a sense, every time you extract DNA from a bone that is tens of thousands of years old, you don't know what you will find.